uh, if thank you for the uh, my new subscribers uh, to the channel, uh, Better Black America TV, where we seek solutions and resolutions to create a better America. Because if we create a better situation for black America, that will make the world a better place because clearly we know we're the best and the worst in the game. So we got to just, you know, clear all the things in between and make this thing uh, conducive to something that we all could appreciate moving forward. So thank you. Hit that notification. Uh, hit those likes because that's what creates the, creates the algorithm. And, uh, you know, this is where we are today. Now, moving forward. Now, 2021 was a trying year, just like 2020. And somehow the black alpha male is still having this conversations, um, you know, in darkness, you know, on apps and, you know, different type of situation. But we're going to uh, come above ground because now the alpha male, the black alpha male has to be a part of the conversation because, you know, we are the formerly tarred and feathered um, George Floyd uh, case when the the, uh, the police officer that actually killed George Floyd was convicted. And then the next little situation with the female in, in Minnesota talking about taser, 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 shot, shot the brother. She got convicted. So now you just can't choke out a brother, you know, and, and say it was for self-defense or shoot someone with a taser when and yell taser, taser, taser. But one thing that we got to, you know, talk about as men, you know, we are, we are our worst enemies. When I say we are our worst enemies, I know what I shoved out that the suspect that, that, that killed uh, Slim 400, rest in peace, the suspect that killed Young Dolph, rest in peace, and the person who actually stabbed Draco the Ruler a couple weeks ago at the, um, the concert here in Los Angeles. Now, there has to be um, conversations. When I say conversation, we have to talk about um, the ins and outs and outs and ins. You know, we typically don't wrestle with flesh and blood. You know, we, we deal with the the um, the the high powers, the principalities, the evil doers of the world. So you really got to pay attention because when I look at these three youngsters who was um, taken out from us too early, and it seems like they were taken out at the right time because it's it, it's, it's typical for. Um, an artist, especially a rapper, you know, on, you know, we see his journey. And then when he get right to the mountaintop, that's when he gets taken out. But the common denominator in this is that these youngsters are getting money and they getting it. And one thing we don't understand is that these youngsters have families. They have mothers, another crime mother. They done killed another brother, another black man gone. Okay. Got us singing, got us singing these sad songs. You know, you got men crying. You know, because we are human. But how did we get here and how are we going to actually figure out a way to move forward? Now, I'm going to be quick with it today because today, you know, it's New Year's. We're prepping for the uh, 2022. They're trying to shut us down again. They got this Omicron thing and uh, the Omicron is basically a little old. So I will be doing a, a video about that as well. And in the comments, if you um, like the content, if you want to see uh, certain specific videos, please go ahead and put that in the comments. And, you know, I promise to be engaging and I promise to be connected. So let me just go ahead and just dive right in real quick. Now, when I say we got to do better now as black men, as alpha males, alpha males pretty much lead the charge and is the defense mechanism for any culture or any race. Now, if you look at white America, clearly the alpha males ran up in the White House on January 6th, which happened to be my birthday. Okay, Black Lives Matters really have no alpha males connected to it, but they have alpha females pretty much connecting with every other ethnicity to, to, I don't know what the situation is, but what happened to Black Lives Matters? You know, where, where they at? Where y'all at? January 6th happened. Okay, you guys are just protesters. Those guys are insurrectionists. It's a big difference. And we're going to be talking about that down the road. But today is a closeout show for the new year and to basically set the premise. Now, um, like I said, hit the likes, hit the subscribe because we're growing and eventually we're going to be a part of the culture. And when I say a part of the culture, that means, you know, we're going to have to deal with black situations or black uh, circumstances, situations where that typically blacks find themselves in. Now, I'm urban. I'm California. I'm L.A., South L.A. You can say what you want, but I, I pretty much know everybody. And, you know, like I said, I don't want no smoke with nobody. But one thing I do want. And I know that everybody that's hearing my voice right now don't want another person to die. Okay. So we can't do that. 
So we have to figure out a way. And I heard of I heard Suge Knight on uh, on the phone call talking about you know meeting up, getting your squabbles on, making a pay per view. Yeah, okay. Only if you allow us to be the promoters, because clearly if you let them be the promoter, they'll kill you before you even start before you even get there. Because think about it. Look at Young Dolph. Just these three. Look at Young Dolph, uh, Slim Four Hundred, and Draco the Ruler. All three of these artists, all three of these brothers, all three of these beloved brothers from their community, you know, with personality, skills, talent, obviously, you know, using their skills and talent to, to help themselves get to another level. But all three of them are signed to a particular record label, uh, not a record label, a distribution company called Empire. And I wonder how much insurance that company has over these artists because it seems like a lot of these artists are perishing. And I only named three. Now you could go on YouTube, you know, you got guys, you know, basically, you know, painting a picture, bringing up a case of pretty much who's taking these people, these youngsters out and who's killing these people. Because come on, how are you going to stab a brother? Typically brothers, man, we don't mess with knives like that. And if we do, you know, we just wielded them. We're not stabbing in specific places to actually get people to actually die. Okay. But we have to, be in front of this. And, and we got, you know, our men that I really respect, you know, our Snoop Dogs of the world, you know, our Kanye Wests of the world, the Jay-Z's of the world with resources that can actually create change, but they don't know, you know, what to do because we're not talking and we're not having conversations. We don't even have a blueprint. So this is the whole purpose of A Better Black America. A Better Black America TV, acronym ABBA TV, ABBA Father, the acronym came after. But we have to really be a part of the culture if we care about the culture. So I'm calling out WAC 100 and uh, 40 Glock, 40 Glock, okay? He has a YouTuber, he's an artist, don't know him personally, don't know WAC 100 personally, but, you know, uh, living in, in, in these days and times, you know, we're only three degrees of separation away, really a half. Because I know people that know people that know people. And I know I'm going to sit in the room, especially with WAC 100 because of his influence and, and the um, power that he does have in the culture. And this is what this is all about. So I just happen to be listening, going through my YouTube, and I've subscribed to a channel where there's this Clubhouse app. And WAC 100 is on the phone with 40 Glock, had a lawyer on the phone talking about <laughs> snitching. Okay. Now, they always talk about paperwork. They always talk about, oh, I got paperwork here. I got paperwork there. I got this. I got that. Okay. Listen, there's two. And I'm going to set, and I'm just, this is for my brothers, okay? Because YouTube is, is aggressive. YouTube is for my brothers. But we're going to have these conversations, okay? Because we're men. We can sit down. We can agree to disagree. We can see and find the commonality. And the commonality, what we have is that we're black alpha males and that we've been tarred and feathered for our whole lives. So now we got to somehow stop the tarring and the feathering and be the profiteers, not the record labels, not the company somehow, because we're going to money launder our money into the community to basically save an entire generation because no one saved our generation. Because this is why we've been hoodwinked, bamboos, a letter straight. That's why we're running amok now with no instructions, not knowing what to do. So WAC 140 Glock is talking about snitching. And the whole conversation, at least the part that I listened to was about snitching. And snitching is snitching. You got Direct snitching, you got paperwork snitching. Subscribe, share, get this to the individuals that you need to get this to because I'm going to set the record straight. Okay, there's two types of snitching. There's direct snitching and there's indirect snitching. Now, direct snitching is taking direct argument in a courtroom, court of law saying he did it right there. Just like I remember a case of Ray, Ray Karouf where his homeboys flipped on him and said, there, there you go right there. Ray Karouf just basically told and pointed out who was the person who basically called the whole deal. So basically, that's snitching. Direct, in court, paperwork, documentation. The second part is indirect snitching. Now, indirect snitching is basically, and I'm keeping it 100. We men here. Let's keep it 100. Indirect snitching. You don't go to no courtroom, right? I see. You don't go to the feds, right? You, 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 you don't, you don't go telling, right? Okay. But what about if you own an app called Clubhouse, saying people's names, saying where set they from, putting them in the mix, putting them on the scene or putting them in an association with you or whatever you got going on. It's still snitching. Snitching is snitching. Direct snitching is in the court of law. 
that dry snitching, okay, indirect snitching is telling people about what's going on because if you tell one person, then when the story gets back to you, it's going to be changed 10 different times. So if you are on Clubhouse saying somebody's name, they're writing the names down. Oh, this is so-and-so from what? Oh, he from that set? And what? You said that he give homeboy a pass? Oh, that sounded like Rico to me. You calling shots. I don't know what this is. But we having conversations on these public apps that everyone is privy to. Now, if I can actually hear that, if I'm listening to it and saying, dang, he put call, they calling out names on this, and I'm just listening and listening as an entertainment perspective, what if, you know, not me per se, but what if the listeners are investigators? What if there's open crimes and, and, and open type of situations where they really trying to connect the dots? Movies imitate life. Detectives investigators, they do put the chain of command. They put the capo, they put this guy, this guy, and they have it. So if you call out a name, they literally talking about, man, who is this dude? Okay. And what set is he from? Okay. And then they tagging him on the Instagram. They tag him. So now let me go investigate this cat. So now he may be a person to question. Dry snitching. Okay. Snitching is snitching. Okay. And I'm going to leave that right there because moving forward, we got to have these conversations because we are a prime ready for us to be on the same sheet of music and to basically be the liberators of our own people. But somehow we got to stop the rivaling tribes, get out of situations to where our neighborhood or our gangs or our colors could actually be our fraternity. And I heard this from Lonzo from the Wrecking Crew. That's one of the big homies of mine. And, you know, I'm going to be working with him with his podcast and we're going to work together moving forward in 2020, 2022 to actually change the narrative because he said something, you know, that was profound. He said, hey, we got to end this gang banger. We got to end this killing culture. And he said, let your fraternity, let your gang be your fraternity. Because I've never seen a Q-Dog, I've never seen a Q-Dog bust on the Kappa. Q-Dogs are purple, same color as Grave Street. Kappas is red, same color as the Brims, Bloods, whatever you want to call them. So whatever. Because at the end of the day, I'm what they call a neighborhood gangster crim. OK, mess with all the neighborhoods, mess with the gangster car and mess with the Brims and Damu brothers. We get money together, too, because at the end of the day, we're all brothers. OK, we're all brothers. We all on the same sheet of music. And the reason why systemic racism is not a topic of discussion, because somehow it's an automatic pilot. But it's going to take some men who saw generations destroyed. We remember in 92. We remember in 92, we was trying to stop the game, self-destruction. We all in the same game. I was playing at Harvard College, and it was a couple brothers from the east side that had to leave practice early to be in this gang truce video because it was a gang truce. What happened? The same thing that's happening now, okay? The same thing, the COINTEL situation running again. We left Afghanistan when Afghanistan, think about it, 93% of the world's opioids. Why would we leave Afghanistan? Another video coming on that. Stay tuned. Hit those notifications. Afghanistan, and I'm writing it down. 93% of the world's opioids, which is your Oxycontin, your Heron, yeah, your, 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 your codeine, your, your, when, when the woman goes and your epidural, all of that. We leaving all of the world's Opioids and drugs in Afghanistan, that means we gave Taliban their money back so now they could build their country back on dope money. Seeing all types of dope on the southern border when we didn't even want a wall or even type or even stop an influx of illegals coming through our country, whether they got coronavirus, the Omicron, or anything, come on in. Now they can come on in with the dope. Now the dope is, is going to come in the community. Now we're about to see the same play all over again. But we about to get in front of it because we can and we will. So WAC 100, bro, I need to holler at you, man. You are really influential. You're a smart man, gang recognized gang. But we could change that energy just a little bit and actually start saving people, saving lives, put money not only in their pockets, but in their children's children's pockets. And then, you know, like I said, trees grow up. So if you're at the top of the tree, you get richer, they get richer. But we just want people to live. And I'm going to say this, build back better. Build Back Better is a political campaign for the Democratic Party, and it's a joke, okay? Now, we have to influence, infuse politics in this because for some strange reason, the black alpha male decide not to even be a part of politics, and this is why the world is the way it is today, all right? So Build Back Better, okay? 
So hit them likes, hit them notifications, because I'm going to do a video about Build Back Better, in which I got one in, in my queue already. You can check that out. But it's going to be in the city of Compton, because Compton High School is being built back better. Okay, but right now, Compton High School is a big old pile of rubble, meaning build back better. Biden's build back better bill. What if he does not get reelected? So just like Compton High School, Compton High School has been brought down to the last compound because they're going to build it back better. So they tore the entire school down, gym, everything. They tore the entire school down to build it back better. What if they don't get funding to build it back after they broke it down? So look at America, build back better. What if the Biden administration does not get back into the Oval Office for a second term and all we did was break down to the last compound, which put us decades behind, which pushed us back. Game recognized game, man. Come on now. So we are not going to reinvent the wheel. We're going to make it better. You know better, you do better. We know a lot. We're smart. We got it. The internet is our second brain, so we can and we will. So it's time to actually be a part of the culture because I personally don't want to see nobody die. You know, we need to have these peace treaties and these communications because when I was coming up, the record labels that was owned by blacks, they would do concerts, benefits, all types of things together. And one of them was watch stacks back in the day with 100,000 at the Coliseum. Think about it. But now since the blacks, we don't own the music. We don't take care of the artists. We have nothing to do with it. So now this is an advantageous situation for people who really don't love us to capitalize off us financially. If I was a record label and an independent artist wanted to sign with me as a black man, and all he talked about was, got my strap, bust him, bust him, kill him, kill him, shoot him, shoot him, bust him, per Percocet, crack, smoke, weed, ha, ha. I'll sign you too. Because I know it's a matter of time that you die and I'm taking out a $20 million insurance policy on your life. So go ahead and turn up even more. Make it worse because when you die, we eat. Think about it, man. Come on now. Why do you think that they don't want us in the record, late, in the record companies, in the record industries? Because we will make peace and we will have concerts that's, that's about love, that's Artists will come, have fun, make music, get rich, and we will be able to recycle our dollars. But it's not about flesh and blood, spires, principality. So we're going to have to have this conversation. So K-Mac, man, holla at Snoop. I need to holla at the big homie. He ain't the big homie, but he's a big homie because he's a big homie because we're around the same age. Snoop Dogg, man, that's that's the mark right there because how Snoop has as 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 came through this game and he's still working with the kids. My son played in the Snoop League. I coached in the Snoop League and they still at it, man. I'm so proud of them cats. The name of the game is Faint Not. So keep it, so keep that up. Love that. Okay? WAC 100. Man of influence. Man of power. You be talking, you know, I don't know what you did and you was, you know, you was in prison and nothing like that. But like I said, I, I, they, listen, six, let me see, six out of ten black men a matter of fact, eight out of 10, if you're from an urban community, you know, has been processed. So we all been processed. You know, I did one day, you know, in the processing position, I did more days than that. But within that one day, I knew that I couldn't go over there with the essays. Hey, all blacks over here, they introduced me to everybody from every set and said, whoever's in here, we're on the same set because it's not enough of us against them. Hey, that's the pisser. That's the shitter. Yada, yada, yada. Let's go hoop on the roof. That's the county jail. But we're going to talk about it. Hit the notification. I share that story with you. But what I'm saying is, in there, we're all in the same gang because it's about race. So that's what we're going to do out here. Okay? It's about race. It's about our race. Okay? Black power. Okay? We can't be killing each other and doing all of this because of, you know, what's going on. But we're going to talk about crab bucket syndrome. Post-traumatic slave syndrome. Okay? We can't. We're going to discuss haters versus non-haters, you know, we do, I'm going to do a video to give you a litmus test to know if you're a hater or not, but at the end of the day, man, we can and we will, and we have to um, be a part of what's going on in terms of the culture, because no one wants to see another human be being die due to gun violence or anything, not even an ailment, okay, but with that being said, I know I'm not the only one, so just chime in, tap in, you know, from time to time, we're going to be putting these videos up, man. And we can and we will. And like I said, it's a better black America, a place where we seek solutions and resolutions to create a better America. Because if the black man 
was liberated, then the world would be liberated. So hit those likes, hit those notifications, because those videos are going to be coming. And uh, we can and we will and faint not. And, and like I said, alpha males, let's have these conversations, man. Snoop, Jay-Z, uh, Kanye West, 50 Cent, you know, WAC 100, Cube, Dre, you know, the people that I'm naming are people that in my mind are successful and somehow we can money pool and fund this thing because why are we not the infrastructure? Why are we not the benefactors of what's going on? Why are we letting everybody and every coach get rich off of us? Because we will get richer by saving these babies because these babies will be the same babies that'll be fighting for us in the future just like we're fighting for the community now because we remember where we come from. All right. So with that being said, man, have, have a blessed day. It's uh, December 31st, 2021, the last day of, of 2021. Happy New Year to you, and the best is yet to come. It's a better black America. It's your man, Bouchon Glover, signing off. Peace out.